said to have descended from heaven. And because of the origin of the founder, the color blue became a very, very important and significant color for the followers of Pond religion. And uh, before the arrival of Buddhism, the Pombo priests, the clothings, and uh, the clothes to wrap religious scripts or objects were all in, in this color of the sky, blue. Nowadays, even though Pond has uh, absorbed a lot of Buddhist traditions, including the robes worn by monks, the border of the monk's vest the hat and the lower garments are still sworn in blue. So there's a way of distingu and distinguishing these two different uh, religions. When you just look at them, you just think like, oh, they're both. So they're, they're all Buddhists. You know? But if you look closely at the, uh, at the robes they are wearing, there's a small thread or a line of blue that is sewn along the borders, and then you know that they are from the Pond religion. Um, <clears throat> and finally, when Buddhism arrived in Tibet, it brought an array of more symbolic systemization of colors. And to, like I said, and to understand the tantric Buddhist art, some impression concerning the nature of the five Buddha families is very, very essential. So these five Buddha principles represent the five enlightened wisdom by transmuting the five kleshas or disturbing emotions and they constitute the five base, the basic mandala with Vajra in the east, Ratna in the south, Padma in the west, and Karma in the north, and Buddha in the center. So this kind of like also signifies or, or represents all the different directions. And they are all, they all have different colors. So Vajra, which is associated with anger, when transmitted, turns into mirror-like wisdom. The element of Vajra is water and the color is blue. The energy of Ratna when expressed neurotically is pride or ego, which when transformed into wisdom of equanimity, uh, sorry, equanimity, its element is earth and its color is yellow. Padma is associated with passion or desire and that when eliminated is transformed into the wisdom of discriminating wisdom. The element is fire and, the, and its color is red. The karma energy uh, manifests uh, neurotically as jealousy and an awakened level as all accomplishing wisdom. The element is air and the color is green. Buddha is associated with ignorance, which is transmuted in the wisdom of fundamental all pervading rule or awareness. Its element is ether and the color is white. So these five colors, they are quite important uh, in uh, Tanka painting because these five colors are what Tanka painters consider as uh, the basic or the primary colors. And uh, to understand the different symbols of these uh, colors, it all goes back, or the root or the basis all goes back to these five Buddha families. And then there's another um, what we call the four Buddha activities, which are also you know, all in these different five colors. Once you understand that, then you get a little bit sort of like a general idea of how the tankas or what the tankas, the colors really symbolize. So the four different Buddha activities or the karma activities are pacifying, enriching, magnetizing, and subjugating. White, yellow, red, and green. And blue also comes in later. The white symbolizes peace and purity, and the deities associated with the activity of pacifying are generally white in color. So, if you take uh, Avalokiteshvara or Chenrezig, they belong to this group of deities. Yellow symbolizes the encompassment of all the precious qualities of realization and the deities associated with the enriching activity are yellow or golden color and they symbolize the spiritual wealth. And in this particular group, the deities are in Tibetan what we call the uh, Namtuse and Kubera. Those are all deities of wealth, you know, symbolizing the richness of the spiritual or of the Dharma. Um, red symbolizes magnetizing through generosity and giving 
and the deities associated with this activity are red in color. You know, most famous being, of course, Buddha Amitabha, and who is also one of the five Yani Buddhas, is Buddha from this uh, activity. And green symbolizes the annihilation or subjugation of negative emotions, and the deities associated with this activity are green in color. Uh, for example, the green Tara. You know. So, <clears throat> when you see these different deities with different colors, then you can in general terms, you can associate it with the different activities. When you see green Tara, you think like, okay, this green represents the activity of, uh, the enlightened activity of subjugation, or annihilation of emotions, negative emotions. Or when you see a white deity, like a Vrindateshvara, you can say like, oh, yeah, this deity's activity, enlightened activity, is pacifying and working through peaceful means. And uh, finally, the color blue, like in the tradition of Pono, is considered to be the foremost among the colors, treated as having no self-nature and like the expanse of space covering the whole universe. And these colors are attributed to the Dharmakaya Buddhas, Samantrabhata and Vajradhara, symbolizing that every sentient being living under the expanse of uh, space shall ultimately realize the state of Buddhahood. And to further enhance the importance of the color blue while making the Dharma Chakra or the Wheel of Dharma, the interior part of the spikes are all painted in blue, again symbolizing the turning of the Wheel of Dharma in all places covered by the expanse of the sky. Um, of course, the, another important color symbol is that of the six syllable mantra of Avalokiteshvara. The six syllables each have different colors corresponding to the different Buddhas of the six realms and to purify the aspirations of the sentient beings towards their path to enlightenment. This is, uh, of course, a very, very uh, compressed or very short meaning over here because the six syllable mantra has a very, very profound meaning. If you just want to explain everything, you could take another lecture <laughs> just to explain the six syllable mantra. But in general terms, just to talk on the symbolism of colors, I just took this part because it's, of course, one of the most important mantras of Tibetan Buddhism. So, the white Om is for the realm of the God and is the color of the Buddha of the realm of the God. The green Ma is of the demigod realm. The yellow Ni is of the human realm. The blue Be is of the animal realm. The red Me is of the hungry coast realm and the black hum is of the hell realm. So, when Tibetans or when anybody who chants these mantras, they have to realize that every syllable they are chanting is freeing the sentient beings living in the six realms from their obscurations and leading them towards the path of enlightenment. So that's why it's considered very, very important. Yeah? And, uh, so these are basically the principles of the colors that one has to have some understanding of before gaining some insight into Thangka painting. Of course, we can. There are many others symbolizing, but in general, if you have an understanding of these colors, I think that should be enough of uh, getting some insight into Thangka painting. So when we, uh, then we come into the part where. Buddhism comes into Tibet, and uh, one of the first examples of Buddhist art came to Tibet uh, during the reign of 